Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about Gilligan's Island. I'm also super excited to announce the winner of the Gilligan's Island DVD giveaway, so make sure to watch the entire video to see if you have won. Don't forget that there are links in the description to other playlists, other videos that I have posted on here. Remember that YouTube right now is having a bit of struggles with notifying you when I post videos I have posted very frequently. So I know a lot of people haven't seen those videos, so go ahead, check back to my page regularly and I think you'll see the videos. Recently I've been looking at a bunch of Gilligan's Island myths or questions that people have about the show in which they are critical in regards to certain plot points. I've discussed why on the show the house seemed to have almost an unlimited wardrobe when they only took a three hour tour. Check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can go check that out. I also talk about why the professor doesn't fix the boat. There's a real reason why and I discuss that in a separate video. So go ahead. I have so many that you can enjoy. If you're big fans of the show, I know a lot of you may be thinking about one thing. That is coconut cream pies. Yes, if you're a big fan, you will know that there are tons of coconut cream pies made throughout the course of the show where Marianne comes and makes these pies for Gilligan, the skipper, the professor, and even sometimes the Howls and Ginger even has some every once in a while. But then this begs the question, wait, how in the world do they make these coconut cream pies? Now, I'm not going to give you a recipe to coconut cream pie, but I mean, how would you bake this pie. I mean, you need an oven, you need electricity. That, of course, throws everything out the window in regards to the show, right? This is a super huge plot hole. Well, you may be surprised to know that this is not necessarily true. An electric oven is not the only way to cook something. I just want to go into how this could be plausible and how it could even fit throughout the realm of the story. The first episode of Gilligan's Island was released September 26, 1964. Now we have to remember the time frame in regards to any of this technology, so I do want to keep this in mind. There are a few episodes that I want to recall specifically focusing on the idea of coconut cream pies. One is Gilligan versus Gilligan. That's an episode from season three in which we see basically Gilligan's double. He is basically a Russian spy who looks exactly like Gilligan who's there on the island thinking that the castaways are on there for a secret purpose against the Soviet Union. This is of course untrue, but you do get to see Gilligan eat this coconut cream pie. The next episode is called Topsy Turvy. Now this is in my opinion, one of my favorites from season three. It's episode number 10, and it deals with headhunters coming on the island. Now they threaten the castaways because Gilligan gets a hit on the head. Now these headhunters come, and Gilligan thinks he's seen an illusion or hallucination of these headhunters, but no, they're absolutely real. They're trying to kill him and everyone else on the island, but they do still get away with comical fashion. It's what the show does best. Now in this, there is a point where we see Gilligan and he has pies right in front of him and he wants to eat them, of course. We're all familiar with all the coconut cream pies, but like I said, I want to highlight two episodes where we do see these pies. Now I want to take a look at how this could be possible on an island, just like Gilligan's Island, with very limited technology, limited supplies, and working in 1964. Now, one of the first ways that this could definitely be possible in the 1960s, as well as today, is with the simple solar oven. Now, I've thrown up on the screen a bunch of photos from different people who have made these solar ovens. Now, you can use very simple supplies, things like cardboard. They did have boxes. You can even use wood. And they did have wood from crates that washed on shore in many different episodes. And it is very simple to do. You don't even need a reflective material. You could use glass. And you can see that some of these are do-it-yourself, something that is very easily made on the island. You would slip a pie in there. You would slip even pizzas, as you can see here. And yes, you can legitimately cook them. So it's really interesting to think how simple this could be. All you basically need is to guide the sun onto the food. You do that for long enough, and yeah, you can cook something as simple as a pie, and as I've shown here. So I think that's really interesting, and it lends a little bit more credibility to the show. And the one that I think is most plausible is a primitive mud oven. You can also use clay, 
But again, uh, I would need to see if there's actually clay on Gilligan's Island. I believe there is, but mud is definitely on the island. There's episodes where they are in mud and you can basically make mud with dirt and water. It's so simple. And there's a video here by Winston Hackett. That is his YouTube account. You can take a look at the video yourself as well as look up how to make a solar oven. They're very simple. But with this one, I just want to show you shots of yes, all you really need is the shape and you need the mud, you need some straw, which they could have all easily gotten from things on the island. And finally, you see him here making a pizza. So this is an example of how you can legitimately cook something. I hope you find it interesting. If you have another solution to how they could cook these items, let me know down in the description below. Now I will release the name of the giveaway winner. And the winner is Chantal Sembrays. Chantal S. Thank you so much to everyone who participated in the giveaway. I will be mailing your DVD very, very, very soon. Thank you as always for the support. I will be doing more giveaways, so make sure to stay tuned. Always stay positive, and most importantly, be hopeful. Thanks as always to all the Patreon supporters, especially the executive producers for this video. Andy B, David D, Ricky, and Joe R. Thank you so much to everyone.